one of the things I'm asked a lot about is my early days in, in professional wrestling, how I got started, how I met the Sheik, blah, blah, blah. One of the things people are interested in is my very first appearance at the Cobo Arena. And this happened not long after my very first meeting with the Sheik, which we'll talk about another time. But here I am, set to go to the Cobo Arena. We were taping television that night, so this is going to be my first time on television, anything other than college, you know, the real, the, the big time professional television, and I'm making my debut at the Cobo Arena. So I'm living in Cincinnati at that time, heading up the highway, heading up I-75. I get about to Dayton and realize that I've forgotten half my, uh, my, my tux, the bow tie oh. for the tux. I had to wear the tuxedo back then. So I found a place at the mall, got the bow tie back on the road, get to the Cobo Arena. Okay, it's sold out, 12,000 people for my first appearance at the Cobo Arena. Nervous? Oh, heck no. no nah, not, not at you. all. A pro. <laughs> Absolutely. So got up there, got into the ring, did my thing, did the television, uh, and uh, comes time for the Sheik's match, and here he comes. And little did I know what he might have had in mind, but it was a little bit of perhaps you might call it hazing. Because he gets in the ring and he takes a look at me, and I'm thinking, uh-oh. Got to make a quick exit, stage left. Did he chase you? Uh, not only did he chase me, but he caught me. I thought, oh, God, here we go. And this is on tape somewhere, probably ashes by now. But he come, came up from behind me, grabbed me by the hair, which I still had yeah. uh, a pretty copious amount at that point in time, and tried to pull me down backwards, and I wouldn't go down. My little legs are still <laughs> trying to move toward the other side of the ring and get out of the ring. But eventually, he just forced me down and slammed. I hit the mat hard like that, and about that time, here comes Johnny uh, Valentine. He came into the ring and saved me. So that was my first time ring announcing. After the Cobo Arena show was done, we had to do promos for the next two weeks of television, which would lead us into the next show at Cobo. And it was a rematch between The Sheik and Johnny Valentine, and the very first time I ever did a promo, one of those two-minute commercial sells for the next Cobo Arena show. So I'm ready to start on one side of the camera, The Sheik, yeah. standing there like this, giving me the eye. On the other side of the camera, Johnny Valentine. And I thought, well, you SOBs, you think you're going to throw me? No way. This is what I've dreamt of my whole life. I've got what it takes. I know I have what it takes, and I'm going to nail this, and I'm going to hit a home run with it. Ladies and gentlemen, coming back to the Cold Bowl Arena next Saturday night, the action explodes in center ring as the Sheik and Johnny Valentine are out to annihilate each other. And the Sheik sort of... Turns around, walks away, so does JB. And says, Thank you, my lord. I passed the audition. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you get to do, at, uh, at the very beginning, ask the crowd to stand for the National oh, the Anthem? the National Anthem, yeah. That was... Uh, yeah. Uh, and all the matches are brought to you under the direct supervision of the Michigan State Athletic Board of Control, Charles Ch W. David Chairman. Yeah. Boy, and that was a great national anthem that they played yes, at Cobo, it was. too. Yeah. Because you had the big flag in the background. You had a big flag yeah. in the background, and they lit it up, yeah. red, white, yeah. and blue. Right. Yeah, a great night for you. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. Jeez, um, I'll never forget it. Yeah, and, you know, thank, thank God that you stuck with it, you know, many, many years. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, and now, right. now you've got the nasty duty to, to yeah. host big-time memories with me. <laughs> they all showed the tape where he pulled me down the next day in the studio. Everybody, all the wrestlers were there laughing at him. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it was probably a little test to see if I would come back or not, and I did. Because a lot of people, not so much announcers, but wrestlers, they'll give them a little bit of a hazing, if you will, just to see if they'll come back. You know, even though you did, you know, mainly ring announcing first, how did you get into, you know, color commentary? Uh, well, at that particular point in time, the reason they brought me in was because that was one of Leighton's uh, vacations in Australia. This time he was gone for at least a year. 
if not two. So, and Bob Finnegan had gone by then. So it was Lord Layton one week. The next week it was Chuck Allen and Tex McKenzie on commentary. And I was doing the ring announcing. And then we started doing the two tapes of the same show. We did the one tape, which was the main tape. Right. And then we did a second version on a different audio track, which was Worldwide Wrestling. So we did big time wrestling on one track and worldwide wrestling on another track. And uh, eventually they did two totally different tapes. But initially it was just different announcers uh, calling the same matches. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, the, that's how I started with commentary. 